there is a ton of interest in figs. You could make an argument that the fig is the next avocado or the next big fruit. You just taste one amazing fig. That's all it takes. One good taste off of somebody's tree that's properly ripened and the, the weather was good and it was in the right climate and you're just instantly, you're instantly hooked. I'm Ross, Ross Raddy, R-O-S-S, R-A-D-D-I. I'm a fig hobbyist that has taken his passion to the extreme. I started off with houseplants. That was just because I had a moldy smelling basement because I work in the basement and we just had a flood down there one year and we got the water out, but we struggled to get rid of the smell for many years. And I just did some Googling, this is like 10 years ago, and, and realized that you can get rid of the smell with houseplants, they purify the air. And I always was really interested in plants, but then I, was like, why am I growing all these houseplants after finally going through all this, all these steps, learning about fungus gnats, having fungus gnats all over my house. <laughs> but then I was like, there's gotta be more, something more to this. I should grow something that's gonna give me something back. And so then the first thing I thought was, what's the hardest thing to find at the, at the grocery store that's expensive and that I really want? And the first thing that came to my mind was figs because I loved, at that point, dried figs because of my grandfather. My grandfather was really the one who influenced me, I think, to get me into figs. He was very much so into figs and he has Italian ancestry. He always had a tree and growing up, I never had figs, but he one day came over to the house with a few branches from my uncle's tree, his brother and he brought these branches and uh, I was like, Yo, Grandpa, what are you doing? You can't bring these sticks, these branches in the house. Like I was told, you know, never to bring the, the outside in. And so he eventually was like, ah, oh, Ross, don't worry, I got it. So we go to the backyard and he's just looking for a spot and just sticks the branches in the ground. And I'm like, this is crazy. What is this man doing? And finally he tells me and he's like, Ross, these sticks will turn into fig trees. And then at that moment, I was just very intrigued. So I went to Lowe's and I bought a five gallon-ish size Kadota fig tree. The first year I ate some Kadota figs, they were not good. I never had a fresh fig at that point. I was actually questioning the whole entire thing of whether or not I should even grow figs because if I don't enjoy it, then what's the point of me doing this? but I just stuck with it. And eventually every fig after that point got better and better. And a lot of it was just, I didn't know when to pick a fig. Once you pick a fig properly, that's the real experience. And that's when you realize that, oh, I've been deprived my entire life of fresh food or not even just figs, but fresh anything that is picked optimally with the right nutrients and the right bricks, the right sugar content and has all the amazing flavors that you, you would expect. But until you do that, you, you never really get that experience. I think like the average American household, if my family doesn't eat very well. <laughs> but I've always loved food. My grandfather always loved food. We, we all love food. It's just that we don't always eat that well. If you ask the average Italian American, do they like food? The answer is yes. But for me, it became a lot more than that and it became an obsession. Once I tasted every single thing in my yard that I grew, whether or not it was a fig or a piece of lettuce, you know, it was far superior than what you can get at the store. And from there, I was just hooked. Every little thing I tasted, it became exponentially like further down this rabbit hole. The fig is that one thing that unless you grow it at home, you will never actually get the full experience. 
Most of the time, commercial figs and figs from a farmer's market are picked at roughly 50 to 60% ripe of what they could be, that you could pick them at your, at your house at home. And so if you're missing 50 to 40% of the ripeness, you can only imagine how, what you're missing. And believe it or not, every single day a fig hangs on the tree and continues to ripen. It's so much more in terms of flavor and nutrients. So every day counts that a lot of fig growers always say that just let it hang one more day. And it's been well proven that in a lot of fruits, not just figs, that that last few days of ripeness that it's on the tree, it really makes a, the biggest difference. But if you were to let the fig ripen to its full 100% ripe, and then you were to put that into a container and have it at a farmer's market or ship it across the country and put it in a grocery store, it's just not gonna hold up. They're very soft. And especially the more ripe they get, the softer they get. And the softer they get, the more they taste like jam. And you just won't get that experience for the most part in a, in a grocery store. So we're home. We're here where I grow most of my fig trees, where I grow most of the food, uh, not just fig trees, but also so many other fruits, apples, pears, stone fruits, blueberries, currants, elderberries, so many other strange and interesting fruits that, you know, just like the fig, give you that amazing experience. But to me, the fig has always been my favorite. And we started out here on this patio with only uh, a couple trees. Uh, over the years, it's grown, and now I think right now we have just in containers close to 100, 120 trees in containers. Uh, in the ground and along the other sides of the property, I also have probably close to 130 trees just planted in the ground. So no one comes to Philadelphia to grow figs, um, at least I've never met anybody that's like, hey Ross, let's start a commercial orchard in Philadelphia of figs. It's just not the right climate. You really want is a Mediterranean, dry, warm climate. So Southern California typically is that place, or even you could say they're a desert plant. Um, the fig is really like a cactus, believe it or not. And so it grows really great in desert-like conditions and dry places. And the Philadelphia area and the Northeast and even the Mid-Atlantic, the South of the United States, these are just places with a lot of rain and too much moisture. And so what inevitably ends up happening is that that excess moisture ruins the quality of the figs. It just gets into the skin um, and it ends up ruining the bricks, lowering the quality, leading to mold and fermentation and spoilage, um, and also increasing the amount of fruit flies that are present. And so you just have really one of the worst environments for growing figs, but it's doable. And so a lot of people who are in the Philadelphia area and the Northeast, especially New York and Boston, a lot of the people who immigrated to those places are from Italy and from similar European fig growing nations. And so these people brought with them their very special fig trees and uh, took them in their socks, put them in their socks and uh, basically imported them illegally to the United States, planted them in the ground, just like my grandfather did, but just sticking them right in the ground, and was able to basically continue on that legacy of, of growing fig trees in the Northeast. And so now, even though it's not the most ideal location, there is a huge genetic diversity of figs within these areas uh, of Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, Massachusetts, and so there is a lot of history and a lot of fig trees that, believe it or not, are pretty, pretty special. My friend Danny Gentile is a big, he was like the, the go-to guy in New York City and New York for fig trees. He just had that reputation over time that he was the guy that would come to your house and prune your tree and take care of it for you. And in the process, he would find a number of really special varieties. And over the process of him and other people in this Northeast and, and really across the country actually, we're finding a lot of interesting varieties of figs that had come from Europe and don't have names and 
had a lot of history with them, I was actually really intrigued to learn that there was actually some really special genetics coming from these places that I was assuming you would only really find them in Europe. And especially places that were more relevant to the Philadelphia area of let's say Northern Italy or let's say even Northern France, the, the figs in those locations that were well adapted would translate well to here. But then I realized that after, again, seeing all these people who had found these figs and they were really special and I was learning that, you know, it wasn't just some, any old fig, this actually was really special. I decided, well, let's apply what Danny had done and other growers had done and apply that to Philadelphia. And so I took my own approach by basically driving around Philadelphia with my girlfriend and subjecting her to basically all this torture of saying, hey, stop, like there's a fig tree right there. And we would just drive down every single alley and go to every single street and then look down the street both ways and I'm like, okay, go. So I just basically drove her insane. And we eventually scouted this past summer between Philadelphia and parts of Jersey, about a hundred fig trees. And in that process of looking at a hundred different trees and people's yards and people's properties, I realized that about 10 or so of them might actually be unique to what is not already available to the fig communities. And so the fig communities of hobbyists that are in the United States have found a pretty vast amount of genetics in the United States that is actually quite unique. These 10 so far that I've been able to mark and find do seem to be unique compared to what is available anywhere from what I can tell. So I took my friend Justin and Ricky here and we went and actually gathered the cuttings. I thought it would be wise of me to not just take the cuttings, you should obviously ask for them, but beyond that I wanted to learn more about every single variety that we, we gathered. Not just me marking them on a map and saying this one does look unique, but actually going there and seeing if I could gather any additional information because if it's not unique, it doesn't hold as much value to me. I'll take from this. I'm gonna call that a day. But there's actually figs up there you can see. Yeah. You never know. I mean that's the beauty of this. This this thing, it's so hard to know what this is just by looking at it. And even the genetics could be different, even if it's the same type, you know? Right? right. I don't know. You tell me. It could be different epigenetically, yeah. Everybody's trees up and down the driveway died. Mm. Um, mine is the only one left. Really? Mm. Um, and it came back again. I've had plenty of people come, pick figs, whatever. I give them away. So the one that I have in the back is green, and they're amazing because they don't um, they don't spoil easily. It's not like one of those honey figs. Yeah, it stays okay. in the tree. Stays in the tree. So I pick them. I can even pick them a little bit early, and they ripen. But the inside looks like a watermelon color. Yes, it's so pretty. Mm. And they really are amazing. That tree's been there over 25 years. So where did it come from before it was planted? Do My you know? uncle has the same tree down the street on the corner. And where does his come from? Is it your family? Maybe from where you guys immigrated from? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, that's nice. My grandfather, he passed away. He was 90 recently, he just passed away. And uh, he had a fig tree growing up that he brought over, his family brought over from Italy. But over the years, it, it doesn't exist anymore. So it's, it's kind of upsetting in that way because, you know, it's part of your family, right? All right, so should you, uh, should we take some cuttings? I'll meet you around the back. Okay. Sound good? Perfect. Okay. What is your name? Ross. Ross. Okay. Ross Ratty. You know, something like this is in the center of the tree. It's not going to get any light and it's not really going to fruit that much. Mm. So just, you can just cut this whole thing out. Okay. I'm really trying to find something different that's well adapted to this area, that's hardy, that's rain resistant, and maybe could be a really nice addition to many people's yards, not just to where it was located for these however many years it's been there. I got so many kinds, I don't even remember the names. <laughs> I, uh, so, you know, I'm over here from 67. Uh -huh. I forgot the, the name because you never see it and never pay attention. This over here, it's in 
not. Well, that's why he's coming around so we can try to preserve what, what we have left here in Philly. So this uh, yeah. one's from your hometown in Italy? Yes, yes. And what was the name of the town? Namdane Abruzzi. Abruzzi. Chieti, Francavilla Mare. Wow, it's a long name. You got that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Learning from these people who have been growing them for many years, that's where you're going to get the best information. You don't really find out a lot about a fig or a lot of plants in the first couple of years. You need to really spend some time with them and figs over time, they get more different and different every single year. They change, they taste better every year. Um, so in a sense, learning from them is gonna be gold in terms of what I can gather in terms of factual information or close to factual information about every single variety. Yeah. And this is me right here. And this is my page. Okay. Oh, I was talking about Russ. He's, he's legit. Once I really said, I'm gonna grow all these different fruiting plants, I started with that YouTube journey and creating videos to see from day one or early start of the process where everything would eventually end up. Hey everyone, this is Ross. Hey, this is Ross. Everyone, it's Ross. All right, this is Ross. This is Ross. Hey guys, it's Ross. Hey guys, this is Ross Ratty. Hey everyone, this is Ross, and uh, you found the best video on YouTube. Well, at first I was like, why would somebody even watch my videos? <laughs> I just like, uh, it just was a mystery to me. I only really recently, and it's like eight or, what is it, like eight years later, seven years later of making videos that I now finally realize why somebody was watching them. Once I finally realized that people are learning something from what I'm saying, I realized that there is a much greater thing that's happening beyond just myself and my own journey. And it's been very rewarding in that sense. There's a lot of people who reach out to me and say, relatively nice things, and there's other people who say really terrible things. But at the end of the day, what I know is true is that the journey that I've been on has been affecting so many people's lives. If you guys are new to growing figs, this is, I hope, gonna be the video for you guys because we talk a lot about figs here on this channel. We are obsessed. We love the fruit. We love to grow fig trees. Uh, we just do so many videos on this topic. I really respect the teaching profession. And I think educating and uh, teachers in general are the most important people in society today. Probably has been like that forever. And so for me, who doesn't have a teaching degree, I didn't go to school to learn how to teach. It just became sort of natural to me after doing it over and over and over again. Today we were here in Fairmount Park, Philadelphia, and uh, I have to say we had a nice show out. We talked about figs, growing them. We had a tasting in the beginning, showed people how to protect them in the wintertime, prune them, grow them in containers. Today we killed it. I'm really happy that everyone came out and uh, we learned a lot today. But now I've realized that I'm in this position to not just influence or educate you know, a classroom of people, but actually thousands of people. And to me, that is just like, once you have that realization, it's like insanely valuable and just totally changes everything you're doing. The, the mission has changed from more of a selfish point of view of either having a side business or again, when I first started, you know, just documenting this whole process to then, wow, this is like actually impacting so many people's lives. And when somebody messages me and they say, hey Ross, I now have 20 fig trees because of you. I'm like, yes, that's that's the greatest. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Which, by the way, I don't really recommend everybody get 20 fig trees, but you know, it's pretty cool. I didn't really have any expectations of having viewers. I didn't have any expectations of making money at this. But once my family realized how much good there is in all of this, they sort of changed their tune and now are allowing me to, to actually make money off of their lawn rather than 
sinking money into their lawn every single year with chemicals and water and paying somebody to mow it, there's actually a lot of income being generated from there otherwise would have been grass. I just think that the, the message of growing figs and the message of eating high quality food affects everything. It's just affecting every single aspect of fresh food, organic food, growing your own food, but also the larger sense of growing figs. And so if I can affect somebody to grow their own figs, regardless of whether or not the information is free or behind a paywall, that affects everything. Like it just makes the world of growing figs so much more better. The, every single person that I affect has an exponential increase in the benefits to everything that I can do in the world of growing figs. My grandfather, who originally got me into this, uh, before he passed away, he really uh, was amazed. And I took him throughout the patio that you see right here behind me last year. And he really loves all this. He really did. Uh, he was so proud of me every time. And now that he was older and saw what his grandson was doing, and really all of his grandkids, it's amazing. He always had this pride uh, for not just what he had done in his life in business, but also now what uh, his grandkids are doing in their lives. And this one, I think, was a little more special just because he was the one who had uh, the most hand in it of inspiring it. I know that deep down, I will always grow food. It's like a thing that I was deprived of for 20 some years of my life. And I realized at that moment that I don't ever want to go back. Just throw your own figs. You know, uh, if you're not gonna grow your own figs, at least grow something. Like, start with a house plant. Don't be afraid and just do, just like do something with your life. I don't even care what it is you do. <laughs> just, just do something that is like helpful and uh, is gonna be a net positive for other people.